Holy shit, there are a lot, a lot of terrible EU4 tutorials on YouTube. EU4 already is a difficult game for new players, and most of these tutorials are boring as fuck and take half an hour to tell you useless shit you don't need to know. This game is not a Civ game, it is not a turn based game, it is not a war game, most importantly at all, it's not a role playing game. In this video, I'll try to teach you the basics of the game so you can get started and learn the rest yourself. Before we get started, be sure you have played the tutorial that has been added by the game itself, so you know the basic controls, interactions and map modes. Let's first start with, what can you do in this game? Well, a lot. You can play as a European nation and try to conquer most of Europe, you can colonize the new world and kill all the natives, you can play as a German tiny nation and form Germany. The options are vast, and this game is extremely detailed since you can pick literally any nation you see on the map. Yeah, it's not like the Total War series where you can only pick some predetermined nations. What nation should you pick? The game itself does some recommendations, but I would recommend France, Austria or the Ottomans. For your first game, I would avoid Austria because it's part of the Holy Roman Empire and that can be a bit tricky. More about the HRE later. In general, it is a good idea to start as one of the Western countries, because their units are better in the late game. You can check whether a country is Western by checking this icon. The Ottomans are not Western, but since they have very weak neighbors, it's easy to expand on your own as the Ottomans. They also have some very strong units in the early game. As a final note before we start, I'm playing with the DLC that's on screen. If you're considering to buy DLC, there is a Reddit post on what is recommended to get. A link is in the description. Okay, let's start. For this tutorial, I'll pick France. You can check the difficulty by going to Options. It might be a suggestion to pick Easy for your first game, but I don't really think it's necessary and would go for Normal. We can now click Play. Checking Iron Man will prevent you from being able to reload if you fucked up. For the first couple of hours, I would not play in Iron Man. If you want to earn achievements, you will have to enable it, however. In this screen you can get some extra information about the country you're playing. It's mostly used to set the scene for your game. First off, your country consists of provinces. If you are in the political map mode, the provinces that are owned by the same nation have the same color. We own all the ruled provinces. The sea also consists of smaller parts, like provinces. Units travel from province to province. Different provinces have different stats in terms of wealth or terrain advantage when fighting a war. I'll go over all icons in the bar as I go. If I don't mention a specific one, just hover your mouse over the icon and it will give you information about what it is and what it does. All the icons in turbo speed are money, if the icon to the left is green, you're earning money per month. You get money at the end of each month, hover to see how much. Manpower, how many people you have in reserve to train for your army or to replenish your army when you have casualties. Sailors, the same as manpower but for ships. Stability, influences a lot of your nation's statistics. Make sure it is never lower than plus zero. Corruption. Costs money. Don't worry about it in the beginning. More on that later. Prestige. Earned by victories or events. Hover for more information. Legitimacy. How legitimate your ruler is in the eyes of the people. Do your best to not let this go down. It only goes down by events. Power projection. Read the tooltip. Now click your flag in the upper left corner. I will go over most of these later. So now let's go straight to missions. Here you can see the available missions and rewards a mission gives you. To see what you need to do, hover over the question mark. To see the reward, hover over this icon. Most of the time, missions can be a good guidance to what you should be focusing on next. As for France, you can choose to reconquer Normandy, which consists of the provinces highlighted in purple, and that will give you a permanent claim on Brittany, which is in this area. If you don't know what provinces belong to a specific area, you can use the area map mode, which you can find under geographical. Let's talk about politics, making alliances and picking rivals. At the start of the game, or when you're getting stronger or weaker, you have to pick rivals as indicated by this icon. Rivals will automatically hate you. You should pick your enemies as your rivals, or countries you want to conquer. As you can see, you start every game with a set number of enemies. It is smart to pick them as your rivals, since they already hate you. So I'm going to pick Denmark, the Ottomans and England as my rivals. When countries are your rival, it's basically easier for you to get their provinces in a war, as you can see here. It is best to avoid picking rivals who are stronger than you, or who you don't want to anger for some reason. Be sure to pick your rivals in a smart way. If you pick them as your rivals, they cannot become your ally for some time. Now on to picking allies. If at any point you want to look up information about the alliances you have, 
simply click your flag and go to diplomacy. If you haven't clicked on another country yet, you should see this screen for your own country. If you do not see it, click the eye icon here. As France, the most useful allies are either Castile or Aragon and Scotland. At the start of the game, you're already allied to Provence and you're guaranteeing Scotland's independence. I would personally not stay allied to Provence because they usually drag you into a war you don't want to fight. Other good allies are Poland and Denmark. The ledger can also be a useful way to determine who you should pick as an ally. Here you can check the army strength of specific countries. You can offer people an alliance by clicking on one of their provinces and then clicking diplomacy or by right clicking on one of their provinces. Check whether they like you, which is indicated by this icon. You can also try to improve relations if you want to secure an alliance. As you can see, nothing has happened since we haven't unpaused the game yet. You can quickly pause and unpause by pressing the space bar, or you can click this icon. If you've secured the alliance, it's also smart to royal marry them. This makes sure your chance for an heir increases. If you don't have an heir, there is a chance another country may claim your throne, which may lead to you losing your entire country. You do this by going to dynastic actions. In this case, I cannot send a diplomat yet since he just visited Castile. Luckily, Castile sent me a royal marriage request. Opening the request will show you all the bonuses. You can also check a country's allies by right-clicking the country and check over here. You can also click declare war and see what countries show up as their allies. There are more types of relations countries can have with each other besides allies. A country can be your vessel, which basically means they are your bitch and have to give you money each month and help you in wars. A vessel can be diplomatically annexed after some years, which you can check at your diplomacy screen if you have a vessel. I don't have the option since I don't have a vessel. Poland, for example, does have a vessel. If, say, Provence was my vassal, as you can see here, the option appears here. A second relation type is a march. That is basically the same as a vassal, except the fact that they have to pay you less each month than a vassal should, their army is bigger than if they were a vassal, and you cannot annex them. You pick whether you want a country to be a vassal or a march. Sometimes vassals will ask to be a march instead of a vassal. You can always turn your vassal into a march, or vice versa. As I mentioned before, a country can inherit or claim your throne. Your country then becomes a junior partner. This is, in a sense, the same as a vassal. Denmark starts the game with Sweden and Norway as junior partners. This is indicated by this icon, where you can also see their liberty desire. Junior partners can be annexed after 50 years. In some cases, they are automatically annexed if your diplomatic reputation and stability is high, which can be found over in this menu. On to some important buttons. The Find Province button is handy if you have a mission to conquer a province but you can't find it. The ledger gives you important information about all countries. Let's move on to money. Your currency is ducats, which are earned each month. You can find more on your income in the economy tab. You earn money mainly by trade and taxes. You shouldn't worry too much about that at the start. Just remember that more provinces usually means more taxes and therefore more money. If you're low on money, or if you want to construct an expensive building, you can manually take a loan. You automatically take a loan when you're out of money. In general, try not to take any loans if it's not necessary. A good moment to take a loan is when you're losing a war. If you're not in a war, it might be a good idea to slide your army maintenance all the way down to earn more money. Be careful, however, if the slider is down, your armies will almost guaranteed lose any battle, and if you slide it back up, it takes some months before your army is at full strength again. You can check your army's strength by the green bar, or by clicking on them and hover over this green bar and checking whether it's full or not. Let's talk about building an army. When building an army, there are some things you need to think about. Firstly, you need to know whether you can pay it. As a rule of thumb, I use that you still need to have a positive income when your new army is at full army maintenance. You also need to make sure you do not exceed your nation's maximum armor capacity, which can be found here. This is also the menu that you use to construct new units. In this screen, you can also see the monthly costs for one unit type. Creating one type of unit costs 1000 manpower. Afterwards, it will only cost you manpower if your army's units have to be replenished. This will only happen after a battle or when your units are suffering attrition, which is indicated by this skull icon. For starters, there will be three kinds of units available. Infantry, cavalry and artillery. Artillery is only available when your military technology is high enough. As to how many units of each you should have, that is something players disagree on a lot. 
I usually go for a maximum of 4 cavalry per army. My ideal army would be something like 12 for 16. I try to keep my cavalry limited as they are more expensive. Finally, be sure to assign a leader to your army when you're starting a war. You can do this by clicking the army and pressing no leader and then selecting a leader if you already have one. You can also recruit one. Be sure not to recruit a leader too soon since it costs military power to recruit one and leaders die after some time. Now that we have an army and we know the basics of economy, it's time to learn how to prepare and wage war. You can decide a target by looking at your possible missions. As France, you have the possibility to take back some provinces from England, which are great things to do first. You're always able to declare war, however, if you don't have a so-called casus belli, which is Latin for reason of war, other countries will hate you and form a coalition against you, which almost always means you're doomed. Sometimes you already have a casus belli against a country. France does, for example, since England has one of France's core provinces. You can check this by going to the diplomatic map mode. All dash provinces are provinces you have a claim on. If you do not have a claim, you can send a spy who can fabricate a claim, which gives you a casus belli. Sometimes completing missions gives you a permanent claim on a province. To send a spy to fabricate a claim, right click a country, go to covered actions and send a spy. In the outliner you can see the size of their spy network increase, which happens at the end of each month. When your network is big enough, you can fabricate a claim. It is best to have claims on as many provinces as you want to take during a war. Now that we have a Acastus Belli, it is important to check whether it's wise to declare war. Check what allies your current target has. What is their army size? You can also check whether their allies will join if you declare war, which is indicated by a green check or red cross in this screen. Be sure not to check the boxes next to their allies, as this will allow your target's allies to call in their allies, making it even harder for you. It would seem logical as friends to declare war on some of the small duchies in Germany, however, this can cause some problems because of the Holy Roman Empire. If a country is part of the Holy Roman Empire, the Emperor will protect that country if it is attacked by a nation from outside of the HRE. You can check members of the HRE with the HRE map mode. Sometimes your allies will not join your aggressive war, because they themselves are in a war. They can, however, change their mind during a war and still join afterwards, which is indicated by this icon. Be mindful that if an ally joins your aggressive war, they will not do so again for a number of years, so be mindful when you call in an ally. How well your war is going is indicated by your war score, which you can check here. You have a war score against every specific ally of your target you are at war with. There are different ways you can make peace. You can make peace with the entire alliance you are fighting against, or with single countries from that alliance. For example, I am at war with Brittany, which is their leader. If I make peace with them, I make peace with everyone. However, if I were to fully have defeat in Austria, I can make peace with them. They will then leave the war, and I would only have to focus on Brittany. This is where suing for peace comes in. You can make peace with the country by right-clicking it, going to Diplomacy, and picking Sue for Peace. You can check here whether you're making peace with the ally of the war leader. You are if it says they are merely negotiating for themselves. When you're making peace with your target's allies, I would advise to only ask for money and war reparations. War reparations is a monthly sum of money the country will have to pay to you. You can do this by going to treaties and picking war reparations. You can see that this increases the peace offer value. If you were to take land from an ally of your target, other countries are easier upset. Making peace with your target mostly speaks for itself. However, be careful how many provinces you take. If you take too many provinces, this icon shows up, which means the chance of your enemies joining a coalition against you is big. You should always avoid this. You can also see whether or not they will accept your offer. Now that the war is over, make course of your conquered provinces. This is done by clicking this button. As you see, making a core costs admin power. So if you expand too fast, you might get behind an admin tag. Finally, if you've conquered a new province, you might get a notification that rebels are rising up. This might be a bit intimidating when first seen, and you might be tempted to decrease the uprising using the harsh treatment, but this usually just shifts the uprising to a later point in time and wastes your military points. The best thing to do is to place your army on the provinces that have unrest and let the rebels rise up. They are quite weak and are usually gone when beaten once. But don't get cocky as I did as you can see. Let's move on to technology. Keeping up to date with the newest technologies is an important aspect of the game. If you fall behind in tech, you might be easily beaten by your rivals. You research new technology by using Monarch Points. 
you can see how many points you have here. The amount of points you gain each month mostly depends on the skill of your ruler. You can check this here. If you can purchase a new technology, you will get this notification. Pay attention, however, since it will not always be the best idea to immediately research a new technology. If you are ahead of time, it will cost you more points to research a new technology. As a rule of thumb, only get technology when it is minus 5% or when there are new features with the technology that you desperately want. Important note, it is not so bad to fall behind on admin or diplo tech. However, make sure you never fall behind on military tech, since that might mean you will lose a war even if you have more troops. A last thing that is important regarding technology are so-called institutions. Institutions are ideas that will spawn in a certain province, in a sometimes specified area, in a particular period of time. When an institution spawns, you will always get this kind of notification. You can check where it has spawned. Institutions spread to neighboring friendly provinces slowly. This is indicated by a green dashed province. You can check how much percent of the institution has spread to the province. When an institution has spawned, the cost for technology will increase for everyone who has not embraced the institution. Institutions can be embraced if it has spread to enough provinces. The more provinces that have the institution, the less ducats it will cost you to embrace the institution. This might sound a bit confusing when you hear it for the first time, but it's actually very easy to understand when you've seen it a couple of times. Lastly, I will talk about events that can occur in the game and what you should keep in mind regarding events, since some might end up costing you monarch points. Events can be divided into two categories, standard events, which are events that can happen every game, and random events, which can occur to any nation at any time. The surrender of Maine is a standard event that happens to France every game and is something you can keep your eye out when you're playing as France. Other examples of these events are the Iberian Wedding, which is an event that basically gives Aragon to Castile, or vice versa depending on what country you're playing. Successor of Vladislav III, which gives Lithuania to Poland for free. There are of course a bunch more, but these are the most important ones to new players, since they give you an easy way to expand quickly when you're playing as one of these countries. Random events will pop up randomly and give you a bunch of different choices. The consequence of your choice is displayed when you highlight an option. Consequences of events might be losing or gaining a number of ducats, monarch points, inflation, local autonomy, prestige or illegitimacy. I will now show you where you can undo this and I will tell you how much monarch points it usually costs. Stability will usually cost around 100 admin points and can be found in the stability and expansion tab. Inflation will cost 75 admin points to lower by 2. This can be found in the economy tab. Corruption can also be lowered by increasing the corruption slider in the economy tab. The more you pay, the faster the corruption will decline monthly. Local autonomy is different per province and can be lowered in the province overview. The more local autonomy, the less money you will get from that province. Be careful, if you lower the local autonomy, rebels may rise up. There is no definitive way to increase prestige. It can be earned by waging wars. Prestige influences a variety of attributes. Check the tooltip. It costs 100 military power to increase legitimacy by 10 points. National unrest increases the chance of an uprising. It can be lowered by having a high legitimacy, or by events, or by having certain ideas. And this concludes this video. With these basics, you should be able to play EU4 yourself easily. The things I haven't discussed are fairly easy to look up or are self-explanatory. Good luck playing, and I would like to thank you very much for watching. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And why not subscribe if you like this video? I'll hopefully see you next time.